G'day everyone, welcome back. When considering if an MMO is right for you, one of the most important criteria we all want to know about is the end game PvE design. What types of content does the game offer? Is it challenging enough? Are the mechanics interesting? And how accessible is it for new players? These are the types of questions we all wonder before committing to a new MMO. So for the past two weeks, I've been diving into the Guild Wars 2 Endgame PvE to give you my first impressions on its Fractals, Strikes and Raids. So let's get into it. Fractals of the Mist are the Endgame 5 player PvE content. They scale in difficulty from 1 to 100, rotating through the 22 different mini dungeons. As the level increases, not only is enemy health and damage increased, but two new systems are introduced. Agony and Mistlock Instabilities. Agony starts at level 20 and it causes enemy attacks and mechanics to inflict a damage over time that deals percentage of your max health in damage every second, increasing with the fractal level. To survive, you need to infuse Ascended Gear with Agony Resistances, which you can get from doing fractals themselves. Mistlock Instabilities are basically your affixes from WoW Mythic Plus. They are introduced at level 26 with an additional instability at levels 51 and 76, such that you have three simultaneously in a tier 4 fractal. The instabilities are random and change daily from a pool of 17 different effects, which all increase the challenge in some way. As you'd expect, completing fractals provides various rewards, including materials, powerful gear, recipes, and unique skins. So what are my thoughts on fractals so far? Well, firstly, I love the concept of scaling repeatable 5 player content. My first few tier 1 fractals were certainly a face roll in terms of difficulty, but they did establish the mechanics, visual style, and length of the content, which is exactly what these early levels should do for a beginner. A few things that immediately stood out to me as I was playing these very first fractals, there's no timer for completion. This inherently makes the content a little less competitive in nature, but definitely supports a more casual, less toxic environment. The Guild Wars 2 community continues to impress me. Literally every fractal, the group has been willing to stop and explain each boss as we go. There's also no trash count, which is fine, but you don't even need to do all the trash. Half of it you just walk past and it'll just reset once you're far enough away. I don't know if I like this, it doesn't sit right with me just skipping all the trash with no consequence. I think the trash should either be relevant to the gameplay, or just remove those packs that people skip. Just a small thing I didn't like, but it's not a big deal. Fractals are short and sweet. I'm sure they'll get longer as the difficulty increases, but most take less than 10 minutes that I've done so far. I think this just makes them far more accessible to players. Again, Guild Wars 2 respects your time. Just in the few that I've done so far, there's been a really good variety of mechanics. Everything from group spreads, to area soaks, jump mechanics, line of sight blocks and blinds where you have to face away at the right moment, CC phases, and plenty of area denial to make full use of your dodge rolls. And I found the visual prompts mostly intuitive throughout, which is a really big positive for me. Admittedly, after my first few, I was worrying that fractals wouldn't get much more challenging. But even just pushing to the top of tier one, around level 24, 25, they already began to get a bit spicy. Mechanics became lethal, and I could already see group coordination was becoming more necessary. So my first impression is that I really like fractals. I'm personally super eager to keep doing my fractal dailies to build up my agony resistance and work my way up to level 100. And just this fact tells me that fractals are doing their job. They're getting me engaged in the content and giving me something to aim for. I think scaling, repeatable 5 player content like this gives such a good sense of progression, and it really excites me. I will say though, I am very curious to see how the difficulty and group coordination requirements scale into the highest levels of this content. Noting that fractals don't scale indefinitely leads me to suspect that at some point they will become repetitive. Unlike WoW where Mythic Plus is an endless challenge that requires the best groups to continually grow and come up with new strategies, I think fractals might stagnate at some point for those super competitive players who thrive on that competition. But I'm not up to that yet and this is only my first impression so I can't be certain. Maybe some Guild Wars 2 veterans can let us know what they think in the comments. Strike missions in Guild Wars 2 are single boss PvE encounters designed for 10 player squads. My understanding is these were intended to bridge the gap between open world bosses and raid encounters, introduced predominantly in Icebrood Saga and End of Dragons. There were 7 released in Icebrood Saga, and another 5 in End of Dragons, though one of them, Old Lion's Court, is set in the Living World Season 1 story. These are available in two difficulties, Normal and Challenge Mode although challenge mode is only available for the five end of dragon strikes. Now I wanted to have a really authentic beginner experience. So without looking up guides or walkthroughs, I opened up the group finder and I dived in somewhat blind. While I mention it, the group finder was generally well used and populated in the strikes part. One thing I did notice though, is that you don't sign up in the group finder. You just join immediately 
There doesn't seem to be any vetting of players or anything like that. And everyone seems fine with this, which was really interesting to me. As a historical WoW player, where people generally use several external systems and metrics to check if a player is worthy of their group before inviting them. Again, this is just another area where Guild Wars 2 clearly prioritizes a welcoming community rather than competitiveness. So something for the beginners to keep in mind. So I dived straight into what was being advertised as the IBS Easy 3. And again, this did worry me a little because they were definitely easy. I literally had no idea what was going on, barely did a mechanic and just hit the boss and it died. It was, to be fair, quite unengaging. But every game has a place for beginner content like this. In WoW you have LFR for example. And in hindsight, that's all these were, because immediately after that, getting all confident, I rolled into Bone Skinner and got completely dumpstered within three seconds of the encounter starting. Literally. And again, and again. So at this point, I did what I think most players would do, and I looked up some guides. Thanks, Mark Luck. But at this point, I was really pleased, because it was clear to me the content wasn't as shallow as the first three were. The mechanics were punishing, it required constant movement and repositioning, we actually needed healers and quickness and alacrity assigned, and some level of group coordination for correct positioning and space management. Whisper of Jawmag was similar, again, with two or three mechanics that genuinely needed to be done right or you'd kill people. Incorporating group spreads, chain positioning, and a group soak. I would put these on a similar level to a normal or easy heroic boss in WoW. So I was very happy with these for what they are. So I went on to do the end of Dragon Strikes, and what fun. I joined a training group and progressed them over a few hours, and I can see why ArenaNet are making the switch to strikes as a content model. These take another step up in terms of mechanics and complexity, especially Harvest Temple. And boy, what a great encounter. It has such a variety of mechanics, and like seven phases or something. I really enjoyed progressing this fight, and super keen to get into the challenge modes for all of these. My understanding is that Harvest Temple challenge mode, in particular, took over five days to clear upon release and had a solid following online, much like a WoW Mythic Race to World First. So that's really cool and very promising for the future of Guild Wars 2 Endgame. Overall, I think Strikes are a fantastic content model and really looking forward to more like the End of Dragons ones. They have no trash, they're quick, easy and accessible to engage with, they reward currency for stat selectable Ascended gear and have a daily lockout as opposed to the raid's weekly lockout. Again, I'm super excited by the fact that I can keep coming back to these every day to farm up my Ascended gear sets for all the different builds I want to have, and ultimately, I think my desire to revisit the content serves as the best indication of my satisfaction with it. Raids are 10 player content designed to be the highest challenge in Guild Wars 2. Seven wings in total have been released across Heart of Thorns and Path of Fire, each with three to four bosses. I'll be honest, coming from WoW, I had heard a lot of negative talk about Guild Wars 2 raids. People saying, you know, Guild Wars 2 has no end game. Raids are terrible, boring, too easy, you get the idea. But I'm pleased to announce that is not the case. Unfortunately, I did find the group finder to be quite dead for raids. It's clear the community doesn't engage with these as much as strikes and fractals. So I joined a guild and signed up for the two weekend training raids. About half the raid were complete beginners and I actually had so much more fun than I expected. We did wing four during its embolden week, which means the raid had a 50% health and damage buff after five wipes. This in itself is a good system to encourage new players to try raiding. Similar to LFR in WoW, the wing had a fairly natural progression curve. The first two bosses were relatively straightforward and they only took a handful of pulls each. Candy and Dormable had some dodging, safe zones, and the red agony circles that required some basic group awareness and positional decision making. Nothing complex, but appropriate for a first boss. The Mersart Overseer was this interesting checkers board style boss. With lots of area denial and some priority adds, the boss did add some more individual responsibilities though, which was nice. Three players in this fight have special roles relating to tanking the boss, the adds, and controlling some of the safe zones. I'd compare both these first bosses to nothing more than a normal raid boss in World of Warcraft. I think they only took two or three pulls each. The third boss, Samarog, took a good step up though, taking us probably 10 pulls or so to kill. This fight was far more engaging than the first two. It required constant movement to avoid the many frontals. It had a jump mechanic, a duo stack mechanic requiring some quick coordination from two players, and some more area denial. The most interesting part for me was probably the first relevant CC phase I've seen yet where the boss would fixate a player and kill them if the defiance bar wasn't broken in time. This actually required a few of us to change up our build to have more CC and pay attention not to just use our abilities mindlessly. Then there was a whole other ad phase requiring some ad control to progress. Though I think I got carried through that as I wasn't really sure what my guild was even doing. Overall though, I really enjoyed this boss, cool encounter and a clear step up from the first, which I appreciated. And finally, Deimos. What a cool boss. This was absolutely a top tier raid encounter in my opinion. You fight Deimos on this platform, 
and the raid regularly needs to split and send one group to this demonic looking realm, where you need to kill the chains at the same time to free our NPC, Saul. And then Deimos joins the fight, and does a bunch of area attacks, AoE one-shot nukes where you need to get in this shield, there's a priority pride ad that tries to kill Saul, some puddles to soak, and more phases where the group needs to go back to the demon realm and deal with nasty Saul. Quick side note, I found out you can just wipe yourself by typing slash GG, which is a small but really handy quality of life rather than waiting for everyone to die every time we wipe. The most interesting parts of this fight were the individual roles including an assigned tank, a hand kiter who continuously drops these puddles away from the raid but needs to be super tanky and heal himself, and the oil kiter who stays at the tank's side to control the drops of these oil puddles, which can go very badly very quickly if stepped on. The oil kiter needs to take some utility or survivability to survive the AoE nuke outside the shield, and I ended up being the backup, which I only did once or twice, but I needed to take the Signet of Stone and a bear as my off pet to do this, which was cool. And then finally at 10%, we portal back to the Demon Realm to finish him off. Just a really epic fight overall, I thought, and I had so much fun progressing it. Deimos took us probably 30 or 40 pulls at least to kill, and we actually needed to come back the next day to finish him. And this was even on the Emboldened Week, where we had 50% HP and damage buff, so it's even harder on normal, let alone challenge mode. Just the fight I progressed, I'd compare to at least a mid-tier heroic boss on WoW, and on challenge mode, I can imagine it might be similar to an early tier mythic boss even. Overall, the raid definitely exceeded my expectations coming into it. And while the difficulty varied a fair bit, that's nothing unusual in MMO raiding. Every raid has easier and harder bosses. It was also quite refreshing to raid without add-ons. I found myself actually watching for the bosses' animations that telegraph attacks, rather than just looking at timers and lists and maps all over my screen. What I really appreciated though, is that through fighting Deimos in particular, I got that sensation of progressing through a tough boss with the same group of people over many hours, working out all the different mechanics and phases together, different people working out their own responsibilities, until all of a sudden you just seem in sync with the group and really feel like you've grown together, which for me, and lots of players, is a big part of the appeal in raiding. I didn't quite expect to get that feeling from Guild Wars 2 raids, and I'm so glad that I did. I've already signed up for the next raid, and I'm keen to continue clearing the rest with my guild, and step up to some challenge mode. So what are my first impressions on Guild Wars 2's endgame PvE? Well it has a decent variety of instanced content including 5 player, scaling and repeatable content in fractals, 10 player single boss strike encounters daily, and 7 raid wings weekly for those who want even more. It certainly has a great variety of engaging mechanics and encounters, albeit quite a lot of variance in the difficulty, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. Easy beginner content has its place. Does it have those really top tier encounters for hardcore players that take many attempts for organized groups to progress? I think between challenge mode encounters like Deimos or Harvest Temple, definitely. But is there enough of that? Eh, uh, maybe not. I think the biggest letdown is probably the cadence with which this type of content is reliably released by ArenaNet, especially if you've been playing all these years consistently, unlike me, who gets to dive into it all at once. I think if the only reason you play an MMO is for the top tier of challenging, hardcore PvE content like Mythic Raiding and WoW, then Guild Wars 2 will certainly have some of that, but probably not enough to keep you around in my assessment. I would urge you to give the other elements of MMOs a chance in Guild Wars 2, like the story and impressive open world content, but everyone likes different things, and if you know that's all you want, Guild Wars 2 may not be the game for you, but I definitely recommend at least trying it if you're curious. I'm certainly glad that I did. So I hope this video has given you some insight into Guild Wars 2's endgame PvE, or at least given you some thoughts to consider. If it did, please like and subscribe, it really helps me out. Thanks for listening everyone, cheers.